Hello everybody, this is Laura coming to you today from End Time Apostasy. I hope you guys are doing well, and just a quick reminder, if you'd like to subscribe, please do, and don't forget to press the bell so you get the notification every time I upload a video. So today, I want to do another video concerning um, Kenneth Copeland, that someone actually defended Kenneth Copeland. Yes, someone has defended him. So this is the video that I made yesterday. So if you guys didn't see the first one, I advise you to go and listen to this one first. So what I'm going to talk about now is a guy called James Robinson. Now, James Robinson <laughs> um, is basically defending... Uh, he says here, My response to the media ambush of our brother in Christ, Minister Kenneth Copeland, He's actually defending him. Can you believe this? Um, and you will what you'll find out why in a in a in a moment. So this is what he says. My wife Betty saw Inside Edition's attack on Kenneth Copeland before I did, and wept so freely she could not watch till the end. When I saw it, my heart was broken because I know Ken and Gloria, and so many of their precious staff and faithful supporters. Ken is one of the most generous, unselfish, giving individuals I know. Now I will. I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you this. Now don't don't get disturbed because he said three billionaires. Now I don't I don't want you to get disturbed because uh, since I'm one of them, it'll only leave two more. <laughs> no, now wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, of course, I'm saying this with a smile on my face, but I'm serious as I can be. But now, I'm not one of those three since I already am one. <laughs> I've already appropriated that. I've been walking in that a long time. The last... Now, don't tell them senators this. The last time we totaled it up, which has been some time ago, this ministry, since it's been in operation 41 years this month, the last, the, the, the last accounting, and this has been, this has been uh, two, three years ago, so there would probably be at least 150 million more added to this. Well, our income last year was over 100 million dollars, so uh, there has been over a billion three come into this ministry since it went into operation. So, amen. <laughs> I'm not a billionaire because there's been over a billion dollars come through this ministry. I am a billionaire because the assignment that the Lord gave me, he said, I want you to begin to confess the billion flow. Because as long as you were in the million flow, you were winning millions. You go into the billion flow, you win billions. So I said, yes, sir, I believe I receive it. That's been a number of years ago, and I have confessed that I am in the billion flow and that I am a billionaire in the kingdom of God. He has never been comfortable talking to the media and was caught off guard. Uh, you know, this guy has zero, zero uh, discernment, like nothing, okay? And you're going to see why in a minute. Anyway, now he's being hammered and mocked for saying he flies in a private plane because he doesn't want to fly in a long tube full of demons. 
But he was exactly right when he referenced the problem is not people. He rightly quoted the Apostle Paul, We do not re wrestle against flesh and blood, but with, with principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. That this is... Dem sorry, that that is demonic activity that attacks everyone on this planet, which is their fiercest assault on the body of Christ, his church. I was hurt that Ken was confronted in such a manner, and found myself amazed at how he tried to gain composure, patiently and consistently expressed love for the reporter. Dear, oh dear. Appreciation for her grandfathers, who were small-town pastors, and even for Inside Edition. You too are a target. Please hear this, my freedom-loving friends. This is the kind of attack our president faces 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Okay, well, I'm not going to go into all of that, but anyway. So, he's defending <laughs> Kenneth Copeland. Now, anybody with eyes can see that that man is wicked. Now, let's just have a look. Who is this James Robinson person? So what you're going to see here is you got the Pope. Now, I've talked about this. Someone was asking me to talk about Pope Francis. But I have talked about Pope Francis in, in some of my other videos that he is going to be... The, basically, they're starting up what they call the One World Religion. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Allah. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Confío en vos para difundir mi petición de este mes. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. Confío en tu oración. Okay, guys, I hope you heard that. Now, this is at an ecumenical conference back in Regent University. And if you go back up here into the transcript, now, the transcript is quite sketchy because you can hardly hear, unfortunately, um, what he's saying. So he's on, they're only picking up bits and pieces. Um, and he's talking about how the power of the Holy Spirit to see Pope, Pope Francis next week. Um, and that he's excited, okay? Because it's very hard to hear him because this is quite low. It's a shame that they didn't try and make it a, a bit higher. But he goes on and on about meeting Pope Francis. Now, over here, we come over to rather expose them. Now, as I've shown you before, we have all these people here, okay? Now, I've made a video, of course, on Kenneth Copeland many a time, and he's talking about talking to Pope Francis, um, but this was actually written in 2014, so this is going back a while now, alright, um, August 1st, 1st, 2014, James Robison, former Southern Baptist Evangelical turned charismatic, has joined hands with Pope Francis in to build a one world church. On his blog, Robinson described his June 24 audience with the Pope, calling it, quote, a supernatural gathering at the Vatican. The Pope cleverly used evangelical terminology to describe his heretical Catholic doctrine, saying that he wanted, quote, quote everyone to have a personal life-changing encounter with Christ, unquote, 
ignoring the fact that Rome's dogma teaching teaches salvation through sacraments, begin beginning with baptism. The very gullible James Robinson gave the Pope a high five, thus fulfilling the warning of Romans 16 to 17. Robinson wrote, quote, This week I was blessed to be part of perhaps an unprecedented moment between evangelicals and the Catholic Pope. On Tuesday, for nearly three hours, a few of us were blessed to meet in an intimate circle of prayerful discussion and lunch. We continued in such glorious fellowship that words could never begin to describe it. Yeah, this man is a very emotional man, okay, and he's very naive, okay? I'm fighting back the tears even as I write. So glorious was the manifest presence of Jesus. Well, it certainly wasn't Jesus there. I tell you, it wasn't. I couldn't help but wonder in those moments if Jesus, as he did when Stephen was stoned. I'm sorry for that because it's not funny that Stephen's... I'm just laughing at this, at the, the foolishness of what he's saying here. When Jesus was stoned, leading to the conversion of Saul of Tarsus to become Paul the Apostle, perhaps once again stood at the right hand of the Father, looking down at that scene in Rome between evangelicals and the Pope, turn to the Father and say, Look, I think my prayer is about to be answered. Look, Dad. Unquote. Now this is in parenthesis. Robinson, quote, Witnessing the miracle Jesus, pray, Jesus prayed for, unquote, James Robson.net, June 26, 2014, close parenthesis, the papal was attended by James and Betty Robinson, John Arnott, leader of the Toronto Blessing, where people screamed, jerked, laughing hysterically, howled like wolves, brayed like donkeys, and clucked like chickens. By the way, I saw this when I was a young woman, I, I would have been about, what, 1993? I would have been 25 at the time, so I was a quarter of a century old at that time. Something. Wait till they come to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto. Leave us to ourselves. Don't leave us to yes. our foolish thinking. Lord, we want all that you have. All, yes. all that you have. Yes. And Lord, if it blows our little minds, let them be blown. <laughs> Father, we want all of what you have. All of what you have. We thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord just reminded me of the old hymn where he leads, I will follow. And he had a, God told me to look at him, and I looked at him. And he had a tie on, and on, I don't know if he's here tonight, but he'll know, on the tie had a wolf howling at the moon. And the Lord said to me, will you howl for me? I said, don't ask me to do that, Lord. He said, if I ask you, will you do it? He said, if I can't ask you to do something in your own house, how are you going to do it out there? So, and I actually heard a woman say cock a doodle doo, and somebody <laughs> interpreted it as a, a, a tongue, and they said that this is what it meant a new day is dawning. Yeah, I know, guys. <laughs> crazy. Okay, 
Tony Palmer, Kenneth Copeland, and others. Palmer, who was the Pope's representative to Pentecostals, and who arranged the Pope to send ecumenical greetings to the Pentecostal pastors attending a Kenneth Copeland crusade in February, was killed June twentieth in a motorcycle crash. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this link underneath for those of you who'd like to have a look at this. This is from ratherexposethem.blogspot.com. Now, the next thing I want to show you is, okay, so where, who, and, and what is uh, Robison doing today? Robison is actually on a TV program called Life Today. And if you look at what Robison has, who he has on today... I'll just bring you over here. Yes, he's got none other than Robert Morris. Now, who is Robert Morris? I have done a video on Robert Morris. Now listen to me carefully, because I'm going to say something very strong. Any person that doesn't tithe is arrogant. Amen. Because you believe you can make it your way and not doing it God's way. And you have to be arrogant to steal from God. And you have to be arrogant to steal from God. You have to be extremely arrogant to steal from God. And please understand, if you don't tithe, that's an open door to demons. Because that's exactly what the enemy does. He's a thief. And you're allowing God, you're, I mean, you're allowing Satan to get you to, to be a thief, but not only a thief, but stealing from God. And I don't say that to make you feel condemned or to argue about tithing. I'm telling you, that's, a, that's an open door, and no matter how many doors you close in your life, if you're not a tither, you've always got an open door to the enemy. And this is exactly what Nebuchadnezzar did. He stole two things. He stole the tithe, and he stole the next generation. Robert Morris teaches that if you don't pay tithes, you'll get demons. Okay. Now, I've done videos on tithing. The tithing is not for today, that it was in the Levitical priesthood. So, guys, I just wanted to let you know um, as to what is going on. And that's all I wanted to let you know, that somebody actually stuck up for this man. Unbelievable. But this is where the Lord talks about false teachers. And James Robinson is a wolf. You need to stay well away from James Robinson. Okay? He's dangerous. So that's all I wanted to say. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord let his light shine upon you. And I'll talk to you super soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.